I think it was a day before we we're about to leave. Danch messages us saying he's got, I think it's called hand, foot, mouth disease, which okay. is like, it's rare for an adult to get it. Anyways, he said that he somehow got it from his kids and his like hands were all like rashed and bloated and all swollen. He's like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to even even do this anymore. Like it was getting worse and worse. We go to pick him up. We could see the kids in the window waving. And we're like, oh, there's the contagions. <laughs> 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 there's the contagions. I gave it to him. Welcome back, Bannock folks. You're listening to another episode of Bannock Dotes, the podcast that's holding it down for the underground sound here in Ontario, Canada, showcasing all sorts of unsigned heavy acts from genres such as hardcore, screamo, punk, thrash, metal. We take those musicians, we bring them on the show and have them tell some of the wildest stories they have from being on the road or in the studio, or anything in between. Any sort of anecdote they have from being in a band. Hence the name ban anecdote. We're bands talking anecdotes about being in bands. ban anecdotes. I was talking to someone on the weekend who thought the show was called Bandicoots, <clears throat> which would probably make a really good name for a Crash Bandicoot commentary-based podcast, which which every episode would just be talking about how difficult each level is because that game is not it's not easy. However, that's not the show. This is Banecdotes. This week, my sponsor is Pet Money. Now, have you ever sat around one weekend and binge-watched the entire Airbud series and thought to yourself, damn, that dog can act. He's a great actor. And then you looked over to your pet who just doesn't so happen to be a dog, you own like a goldfish or, a, or like a lizard or a parrot, and you think, wow, not much of an actor. I don't, I wish my pet could somehow make me money. And then you, you know, you, you take a closer look and your pet's, you know, you know, missing an eye or something. It's fairly ugly. It's, uh, it's, it's not appealing enough to be an Instagram influencer. Well, pet money is now introducing pet currency. So your pet can finally pay for its own food and vet bills and grooming bills just based on how it looks. Now, if you have a nice prestige looking pet and you own an Instagram account and it's already doing well, you probably don't need to worry about pet money. Um, But if you wanna make some extra pet money, some extra pet bills, you know, uh, you can sign up to, to, to pet money but if you have an ugly pet and uh, are sick of paying for its ugly food and its uh, ugly vet bills, then uh, sign up for pet money and it'll give it an assigned salary. And uh, however, it might not be too much. It'll finally take a bit of that expense of that weekly expense that's been building up every week with, with you and your pets. So yes, right now, pet money is offering a, uh, a discount of five, you get a, a, a pet money is giving you five hundred dollars in pet money um, if you sign up with Banecdotes today. Uh, that's go to, so if you go to petmoney dot com slash Banecdotes b a n d e c d o t e s pet, uh, pet money will give you five hundred dollars free in in pet money if you use. A promo code uh, Phil with doesn't matter if it's one or two L's but both will work sign up today pet money so that your pet can finally buy its own food <laughs> this week my guest is none other than Shiko he is the vocalist of a band called Sky Caught Fire, which is based in, we'll say it's a Welland based band, but Niagara is like the, you know, it's the umbrella term. Uh, Shiko played in uh, a bands that you may know as uh, A Day in a Death Wish, Rat Affair. Uh, he also played in uh, American Hell. He was a great person to talk to. Him and I had a great conversation, especially because we talked about some of the old times with him being in his band and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, this is my interview with Chico. We're going to get the show started off with uh, 
one tune by uh, Sky Caught Fire, and this song's called Limitless, here on Banecdotes. And I am a feeling weightless, a tenor from all my fears. Illuminating your passive, what's life on with birds of fear? creepy lady she always <laughs> gives us the intro how you doing craig how you doing today i'm doing good buddy doing good thanks for having me on here yeah no, thanks for joining me so i've Sorry it list- took so long <laughs> yeah no worries yeah you were one of the first people that i actually asked uh when i was uh yeah and to I, get this going. I appreciated that very much so um so yeah it's just good to finally be on did it, it was it did you have to grow the beer out is that what happened you just grew it out? <laughs> <laughs> no it was pretty this is a this i started growing this just literally right before the pandemic hit wow. so it was like it was just scrubble before this oh it's a monster beard <laughs> thanks buddy i love it uh so i've let the listeners know what you do but tell us in your words your role in the ontario heavy community oh wow um i'm currently in a this new project called Skycoff Fire, but uh, 
prior to that, I've been in, in various uh, punk rock, uh, hardcore, metal, metalcore, whatever you want to call it, bands. Uh, I guess I, my first band was the Dana Deathwish back in 2002, I think, when it started. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a long time ago. We're nearing 20 years now. Um, yeah, so I started out with uh, Dana Deathwish, which we were actually called Necronomicon. It was before we f- started playing shows. We were called oh, really? Necron- yeah. Um, and I was, it, we were not, we weren't good whatsoever. Like, well, <laughs> in my opinion, anyway. Uh, yeah, we're just really like, uh, my vocals were just like, like I, I really loved uh, at, uh, Scott's, Scott from Cancer Bats, old band, uh, at the mercy of inspiration they're like my favorite local area band and so i pretty much like i replicated andre uh their vocalist uh it was which is this like death metal screaming and like uh and then from there i kind of got into punk rock and started changing my vocals i so I, my next band was uh rat affair which was like a hardcore punk rock band and uh and after rat affair i just uh I didn't, I didn't really want to, uh, be in anything other than punk rock, uh, like doing vocals. I didn't want to really do anything else, but, uh, the guys in American hell, they needed a vocalist. Uh, they were spinning their tires for a year or two looking for vocalists. Um, and they asked me and I just, by that point, I just missed being in a band. I just missed, uh, writing music, hanging out with your buds and like, and, and obviously I, I love being on stage and performing like that's, uh, that's a huge passion. So I missed that as well. And I said, what the hell? Oh, sure. <laughs> I'm in. And, uh, from there, American hell had a fun little run. And, uh, again, after American hell ended, I, again, I didn't want to be in anything, uh, <laughs> didn't want to be in anything too, like heavy, if anything, uh, down the road, I was interested in like punk rock again. And then these guys asked me to be in Sky Cop Fire and, uh, and the music just, uh, I don't know, we, we just kind of, uh, we didn't, we didn't stick to writing just, just like metal or metal core. And I just saw an opportunity for me to like, just uh, have my vocals kind of like old school death wish rat affair style do more of that, if anything, and, and no screaming. And so it's just, it's been a good fit and, it's been f- fun as hell to be in a band and write music again. Uh, it's just really shitty, obviously, that we can't play shows and and yeah. uh, and play this live. But I guess we're probably soon enough we'll be able to do that. Soon enough, soon enough. So awesome! <laughs> I love that you gave us a little back. Uh, yeah, sorry, I history. guess I went on a little bit, but <laughs> no, 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 no. I know. I like I said, I just, that uh, <laughs> that's what the podcast is for. We're here to talk, talk music. Steve's also in your band too, right? Yeah, Stevie, he's, uh, he's, uh, man, he's, uh, he's so freaking talented, man. Um, it, it, he'll be coming out with like full songs, multiple songs within a week, like drums, everything fully written. It's just blowing our minds. Like uh, we, we literally have like three albums worth of music right now that we've, because we couldn't play shows or really jam much. So we just, we said, screw it. Let's just keep writing. Um, and we'll use what we'll use over time. And uh, but yeah, Stevie's amazing. Um, I, I love the guy. It, it's it's been an amazing being in uh, in a band with him, and uh, yes, so far it's been great. Wow, yeah, wow, that's a lot of music in one time. So you know Stevie then as well? Yeah, yeah, Obviously. yeah, yeah. I've I've uh, I've hung out with them under their crowds. I can't even initially remember where I uh, met Steve, but uh, uh, we've definitely hung out, and yeah, he's he's a crazy guitar player. He, and he yeah, loves yeah, exactly. Like uh, like we don't have a lot of shredding in our songs, but he, like out of nowhere. You'll hear it in Redemption. Suddenly, he's written some shreds, and it's like, oh man, you, we we need more shreds in our songs. Uh, <laughs> but it's kind of funny, like uh, super talented. Like we didn't we didn't really plan on having cleans in our in our music, and then he's like, oh, I, I can try out some singing. He sent us uh, just something. He was like a little demo, and we're like, man, like man, you can sing. Like <laughs> let's let's use this. Why not? Like you're talented and. Uh, there's room like we have a lot of melody and uh, we're very melodic in our music so uh yeah it's he's a super talented kid 
Yeah, that was my next question, whether he did uh, the the backup vocals. That's awesome. He can yeah, do both. He, he's uh and he'll send me demos of like of a full song with both the the heavies and like he can he can scream too like he actually does you can hear some on some tracks he does some uh some screams as well mm-hmm. um it, kids uh loaded with talent super <laughs> uh lucky to be in another talented band <laughs> with uh so many talented musicians now, correct me if I'm wrong. Your nickname is Chico, right? <laughs> yeah, man. Where where uh, did that originate from? Oh, my God. Uh, I didn't expect this to come up. <laughs> <laughs> I've done my homework. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, it's it's very old. Um, it's super silly how it started. But um, many, many moons ago, there was a, a chat called IRC. So there's a... There was a channel called Niagara and like people from all over Niagara were in this, like mm-hmm. even dead mouse was in, in this. Like, Oh, cool. Uh, it was, it was super popular. Um, and my handle on there was Mr. Shiko. Um, so when people met me outside of like, like at events, uh, shows and whatnot, um, they would be introduced to me as Shiko. So <laughs> that just, it just kind of stuck as my nickname as being Shiko and where that came from was actually from just a stupid, uh, condom commercial actually, <laughs> <laughs> where the, the guy is, there's like, uh, they're just kind of like spewing off the benefits of condoms or whatever. And then the guy at the end is just like, suddenly he's convinced that condoms are great. And he's like, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sheik. So it was a chic uh, condom commercial where that originated from. And I just ended up using it as my handle on online. And uh, <laughs> so super, it's stupid, but the, the nickname stuck in it's, it's, it's evolved over time into like chicken and <laughs> pa- Papa chicken. And then I short formed it to Poshik. So that's my, my, <laughs> that's my handle on like instagram pocket <laughs> so that's where that came from uh it's it's silly but no i love it i love it that it's got i love that you have a nickname and i love that it's got a history that 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 that's what it's about <laughs> yeah it's it's good times i'm i'm into it <laughs> now now when i was in high school i would often go see your uh your bands like uh a day and a death wish rat affair uh and, and uh american hell this be at um, like Lions Club and stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, man. Uh, uh, Some of the best shows. Where where was the? There's the one club down. It's not. It's Odd the, Fellows. The basement of Mate. Um, okay. in St. Catharines, the uh, Red Square. Oh my gosh, yeah. Red Square. Red Square. Wow, that place was fun as well. Yeah, <laughs> it was like a communist bar. Yeah. <laughs> 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 with like the like with like the flags painted on the walls and everything. Oh, it was so random! Such a random place to play, but it was great. It was a great place to play, though. Oh my gosh! Yeah, <laughs> I loved all the old venues. Yeah. Uh, uh, did you ever go to any shows at Odd Fellows in Welland? Like, no, that's I like, didn't. That was a, that was really that was pre Lions Club and and Rose Villa, but it was just a tiny little like house, really, really. But it was all cleared out. Um tiny little it was a hall but oh my gosh yeah that place was wild we'd have we'd be over capacity and police would show up and and we would just we would whoever's running the door we just we'd have a counter and we'd they'd be lying they're like oh no we're still at uh we're we got two more people to for (laughs) till capacity there's all underage drinking going on it was it was uh it was wild (laughs) wild times did you ever play the hideaway oh yeah hideaway played like some of our first well all of our first st catherine shows were hideaway oh yeah i played with like pretty big bands there too like at the time anyways like we played with boy sets fire at the hideaway oh cool yeah played with played with protest the hero before they were even big there was just these uh with three inches of blood um protest the hero were these just these young kids at the time they were just freaking shredding like they're we're like man these guys are sick like Mm -hmm. and of course they ended up getting huge as well they're huge Uh, yeah (laughs) but yeah we played many awesome shows at the hideaway that place was uh good memories there for sure now correct again correct me if i'm wrong but have you done some firefighting in your day (laughs) yeah so i was a i was a volunteer firefighter for five years in welland um i also i also went to uh um school uh for firefighting in Mm -hmm. uh, in texas so i did like a course uh there where uh it was it was course by, you like you did it online, but once you completed the online portion, you went to Texas, um, 
for two two weeks, I think it was, um, and it was all hands on training there. And so I completed completed that. I got all my certificates, so I was certified, and then got volunteer. And I was going to be, I was like working towards going for full time, um, but I ended up. So I work at Canadian Tire. Um, I've worked there for like 15 years, and I ended up getting like a really good job in IT, which is career. Um, mm-hmm. And I also went to school for in computers. So uh, after I, after that, I just kind of I was just content basically, and lost the motivation to continue for firefighting. It's just so expensive just to apply. Like it'd be like $500 just to apply wow. to uh, to to a station. Um, so it just kind of that's how that ended. And then I just, I, uh, as far as uh, volunteer, I still, I still love to do it, but um, it was just eating up a, it was a lot, like, it took up a lot of uh, time and uh, it was just demanding, um, basically. Like, I yeah. couldn't, I couldn't commit to it. Like, I was missing hockey and the things I love. Uh, and it was just like, once I wasn't going for full time, it just kind of, uh, I, I, I retired. <laughs> right, right. I, I would have said it was physically demanding, but I mean, if you're doing hockey, it's like, I mean, but still doing both at once is still a lot. So, I mean, it's, and it's been on a lot of plates. Oh yeah. It was, it was, uh, I was in good shape for sure. Um, uh, when I was training for that, um, it was a blast. I, I miss it for sure. I, and I've, I've had, a couple of encounters where I was trying to, where I was uh, asked to come back, but uh, it, again, it's just, uh, it's just too demanding, even for a volunteer. And uh, I, I just uh, couldn't commit to it. Am I allowed to ask any like experiences you've had with firefighting, like actually like, uh, like you know, burning buildings and whatnot? Yeah. Yeah. Probably. I, I think, I, I, don't, I don't think <laughs> like, I, so. So like, what, are, like, what are some of the, like, uh, one, one of the coolest ones, oh, yeah. sorry, I cut you off. Yeah. yeah. No, one no. of the coolest uh, experiences was we went to, um, uh, fire. I think it was, is it one of the factories it's over by the, what's the factory over by lions lions club? Like, is it, it was like Gen, is it general tire or Gen, Gen, Gen Co? <laughs> I don't know that that factory that's around the corner from from uh, I don't know what it's called, but yeah. Anyways, that that went up and uh, there was a monster fire there, and I got called. Well, we all got called to it, and I was at that fire for like seventeen hours, all wow. all all throughout the night, and uh, I ended up being one of five volunteers that got asked to do. Uh, they call it like a recon mission to go around the building to see if the fire had penetrated the other side of the building. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we we went. It was like two full time guys and uh, a couple other volunteers as well. We went around the corner and the fire did actually breach the other end. And so we called for um, a fire truck with. Uh, bring water and an an engine and uh we actually went in to the building so it was like my first time actually going into like a live other than training in texas like which Mm -hmm. we went into a live fire but this was totally different like it reminded me of the movie backdraft i don't know if you've seen backdraft but like i could see the flames all creeping up the the walls and everything wow uh so we're we're like we opened up the line and started attacking it from the inside and it was just a crazy experience because at that point I had not been in a live fire. I, yeah. I, I had attacked some fires from the outside. Um, but like, as far as going in, it's kind of rare that a volunteer would ever right. get, get to that point. Um, so that was pretty wild. 17 hours, I had blisters on my feet and Jesus, it was, uh, <laughs> it was wild. That's crazy. Um, what have been some of your favorite Ontario bands within the last year or so? What's got your attention? Last year or so, um, rules are good times. Yeah, uh, rules are really cool. Yeah, big fan of rules. Uh, Ben's a. I've played many shows with Ben's past bands, like the Video Dead. So I know Ben very, very well. Uh, rules is good. Um, the guys in uh, I don't know if you remember the After Chapter. They uh, yeah, I do. They're in a new band called. Well, there's a couple of them anywhere. Anyway, from After Chapter, Ioso. Um, I think that's how you pronounce it. Yeah. Uh, those guys are, those guys can shred too. So I'm Iosa? Wait, I'm, Iosa. Ioso, I think. Actually. Okay. Ioso. Um, 
but there i don't know if you heard any songs from them yet but uh i think you'd be into it it's they only have a couple couple tracks right now but i'm i'm itching to hear more from them um other than that local i mean i've been so like it's it sucks and i'm bad for it but like when i'm not in in the music a lot of times i just kind of i'm unplugged from social media so i'm unplugged from all the new bands mm -hmm. um so i like i didn't even know about i didn't uh, to be honest i'm sorry i didn't know about hellband i didn't know about sinner but i have listened to you guys now like I, uh both i i like both bands you guys are freaking, <laughs> thank you, i, I thank love you. that you do vocals for two entire like kind of like you have like the the screaming and then you have the the hardcore band that's it's wicked like i i love that thank um, you thank you it just reminds me of like when i was doing that with death wish and then i was kind of like doing vocals within these walls and doing the screaming it was it's it's fun right like it's, yeah it's fun where you can do uh both like both styles um yeah i don't know i don't know uh you have to fill me in some for some more uh good local, local so, bands. yeah no uh i mean, I mean that's... that's what this oh rust i they're pretty good too yeah um i checked out them after uh after after, after actually he was on your uh on your pod yep tommy uh, checked out tommy yeah yeah so uh, they're good times too um i didn't listen too much but just from what i've heard uh i was into it for sure yeah and um, i believe i believe they've got new music coming out too oh sweet yeah but other than that yeah like i'm open to listening to new bands uh but i've been ch trying to actually kind of catch up on uh just some of the other other uh metal punk rock bands that have come out in the last not like not even local just bigger bands uh that i that have come out with music that i just haven't heard so that i mean there's so much music to listen to and um yeah yeah no no i mean you that that's, that's quite a few bands I'll, I'll have to check out that was it ioso i have to check IOSO. that out yeah definitely check them out they're uh good times they got Bandcamp or uh was it the streaming stuff they're they're on uh spotify as well perfect yeah. uh, yep cool awesome uh lastly before we get into anecdotes uh, if you haven't been able to notice, I've did, I did, I did a bit of a deep dive on your profile and I noticed <laughs> that you trained uh, like some karate or uh, martial <laughs> arts. Yeah, man. I, uh, fell in love with jujitsu, um, well, four years ago or so. Um, it's just, I've always wanted, like, I, I'm a fan, big fan of MMA and martial arts. Uh, like I used to do karate when I was young, but I've, I've wanted to do jujitsu for a long time and just, uh some health reasons and motivation and timing just kind of prevented me from joining. And then finally I stepped foot in a gym and uh, signed up and I, it's just like, I'm, you can say I'm pretty much obsessed with jujitsu. Like, oh yeah. Eh? Uh, it's been, it's been awesome. Cause prior to that, my biggest obsession or, or love was like, other than music was hockey, but now it's like jujitsu is like equally, if, if not more, um, yeah, so I've been training jujitsu, and uh, it's been a rough year of not being able to train jujitsu as much. So it's like for mental health, it's been it's been a struggle actually with not uh, not being able to train. It just keeps me in shape. It keeps me. It just gives me something to look forward to. Uh, uh, yeah, I freaking love it, man. Do you follow the UFC as well? Yeah, yeah, I watch UFC. So you, are you so yeah. stoked for the fight tonight? Oh, big time! Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a... I mean, I'm actually mainly looking forward to the uh, Burns and, and Thompson one, but the whole card, like, I'm, I'm uh, I can't wait. I I don't typically follow UFC, like, I don't know too many like current mm -hmm. fighters by name, but like, I enjoy you watching. enjoy watching it. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, like yeah. you you put it in front of me, and I, I'm I'm <laughs> definitely gonna definitely gonna watch it. That's awesome. Good That's cool that you're really into that.
Banecdotes. Let's get into some banecdotes. Tell me some of your wildest stories from being on the road or in the studio or anything in between. Sure, man. Um, so that I really, I remember when you asked me to be on this, uh, I really struggle. I'm like, shit, man, it's been like so long since I've been on the road. Like, I know I have tons of fun stories and crazy shit, but like, I honestly can't even freaking remember half of them. Like, <laughs> um, so I'm like, okay, I'm not going to stress over this. Over time, I was just like, I don't know. There's a f- fun story where uh, with American Hell, it's more, more recent, I guess, uh, than my touring days. Um, so we did, funny enough, we did uh, this, we got asked to do this uh, showcase for Victory Records, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and how this came about was we played a couple shows with, uh, I don't know if you remember a band called the bunny, the bear. Yeah. I remember um, the bunny, the bear, they, yeah. they, like, they wore the masks. Yeah. 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 So we, played a, we, we played a couple of shows with them. And after a show, the singer, um, he goes, yeah, victory records, uh, just to give you a heads up, victory, Tony Brummel, the owner of victory, um, mm-hmm. He reached out to me, he said, keep an eye on you guys for these shows and uh, and let me know. And he's like, so I just wanted to let you know. And I, I I liked you guys. So I let them know that. So they'll probably be reaching out to you. And we're like, what? Like, this is this is nuts. This is... Mm-hmm. And, and American Hell was like, we we're never like we we're at by this time. We were like older and like we weren't planning on like like the most we could do for tours was like a week, maybe like we're. We're, our touring days were were gone. We're just doing it for for fun, not to not to make a career out of it or anything. Um, but we're still like f- freak, man. Victory Records, like this is pretty cool. Like w- we have to, we kind of have to do this. Let's let's we have to go to Chicago for this. Anyways, they did reach out and like within that week, they reached out saying, "Come do a showcase for us." So we're like freak. All right, let's do it. And like just for the experience alone, right? We'll we'll drive to Chicago, do, a, do the showcase. And if nothing happens, who cares if, if something, if we get an offer, like uh, who knows, like we'll, we'll just <laughs> play it by ear. Um, so a month after or two months after uh, when we're ready to go to Chicago, um, it was like, I think it was a day before we we're about to leave. Danch messages us saying he's got some kind of like, I think it's called hand foot mouth disease, which okay. is like, it's rare for an adult to get it. Um, it's like normally like just kids get it. And it's just mm-hmm. like a fever and a rash. It's nothing like it's contagious, but it's mainly like kids that will get it. Anyways, he said that he somehow got it from his kids and his like hands were all like rashed and bloated and, and all swollen. he's like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to even, even do this anymore. Like it was getting worse and worse. We go to pick him up. We, we could see the kids in the window waving. And we're like, oh, there's the contagions. <laughs> <laughs> there's the contagions. I gave it to him. And uh, he leaves the house to come walk into the van. And I'll never forget the, like, he looked like, he looked like a combination of like Quasimodo and the emperor from Star Wars. He had his hood on. He was arched over. He could barely like walk. He's limping. And, and we're like, oh, my God, how the fuck are we going to be able to play this? Like, how are we going to be able to pull this off? He gets to the van. He can't, he's like, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to play guitar. Like, I, right now, he, like, he was trying. He was practicing at home. He's like, I can't, I can't even play any chords. Like, and his hands were, like, swollen to shit. They're all rashed. And we're like, fuck, man. Like, well, we can't pull the shoot. Let's just go and hopefully over time his hands your hands get better like he like the whole car right there he had his hands out the window trying to chill them and because they were swollen to shit Mm -hmm. and they were getting like worse by by the minute or hour i I can't remember but they were getting worse like we kept on checking in it looked like he was aging like benjamin buttons or whatever no (laughs) so i remember us like asking him like keeping tabs on like how he's feeling we're like how old are you now danch like (laughs) so how how old are you now he's like oh i'm 80 now like we're like oh no (laughs) um thankfully by the time we got there um it was like it was it was getting better over time. So we we uh, I think it wasn't till the next day. So we stayed. I can't remember where we stayed, but we stayed somewhere before Detroit. And then by the next day, 
um, it was it was better. It was kind of actually actually going back backing up a little bit. It was kind of funny going across the border and then having to explain like we got <laughs> pulled we got pulled over of course we but we were fully prepared we had all our uh gear the serial numbers and all that all prepared for this but we got pulled over and in, in interrogated type type of deal they question us and of course our band name is american hell they're like yeah. they gave us some uh, slack for that which was kind of funny <laughs> um anyway by the time we got there uh and then to the the studio it was at a studio this showcase or right um there was like sound guys and everything that set it up for us um dance was thankfully fine um but it was a freaking scare man um yeah and as far as the showcase it was probably one of the weirdest craziest shows like not craziest it was just the weirdest awkward show i probably ever played like the representative for victory came in just as we're, we're done getting set up and doing a sound check with the, the sound sound guys. And he's like, okay. Um, the, the guys are all here. Tony's here. Um, he's going to come into the room. Once he comes in the room, you guys just play your three best songs. Um, so they came into the room. The, the lights were out. They had like, like a crazy light show as well in this, in this, in this place. But so all I could see was five guys in, in the crowd, um, but just like a, a shadow of them. Like, <laughs> like, like all, in the movies. Yeah. And they're all, <laughs> so I couldn't see their faces, just a shadow of five guys all spread out as well with their arms across like this. <laughs> and it's like, oh my God. Uh, and we just, we played our hearts out. And Danch was, <laughs> I, 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 Danch, Danch rocks out a lot re- regardless, but like he was probably went off more than, I've ever seen him. And, and meanwhile, he was like in shambles at the yeah. time still. Um, but yeah, it was cool. I could see that they were uh, into it and uh, they clapped. And then the, the representative came up to us right after we were done and said, well, yeah, this, it looked like they liked it. They'll be in touch if they, if you, they're interested or whatnot. Um, so after that, we just went and got some deep dish and cause we're in Chicago. Why not? Yeah. Right got to get some deep dish i've heard so much about it got some deep dish we stayed at a hyatt 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 uh hotel like a fancy hyatt hotel (laughs) in 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 the city and uh we wanted to go do some like drinking after but we had like an early morning so a lot of the guys after eating the deep dish were like ready to (laughs) pass out and we're like ah so uh mike the drummer uh maroney um he him and i were like screw this like let's just go out and get have some drinks just the two of us at least so we went down to the just the bar lobby and they like it was like section off where they like they asked they they asked us like are you part of the convention we're just like yeah 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 we're (laughs) part of the convention but like everyone was wearing suits and or like really dressed up and we're (laughs) i'm just wearing like (laughs) probably a jamaican jersey i don't know that uh Maybe it was just a band shirt. Either way, we looked out of place and uh, we got some drinks and we started talking to some of the other uh, people at this, at at this event. And uh, they're like, are you guys dentists too? And we're like, (laughs) what? So I guess it was a a dentist convention. 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 Yeah. And uh, so we shot the shit with them and they're like asking us what we're doing there. We're like, oh, we're from Canada. We just came down here to do a uh, showcase for we call we call it a major label we're like this major label and they're like what that's the coolest thing and uh they just thought it was the raddest thing ever and they just bought us drinks the entire night like well i think we were just there for like two three hours but either way we got like maroni and i got free drinks this all night and uh we just had a blast uh partying it up with with these dentists uh (laughs) it was so random and uh, i'll never forget it was such a great experience the whole time what do you think entails in a dentist convention? What do you think they get together and talk about? I have no idea, man. You know I could, what I mean? I mean, I'm sure they told us, but I, I wouldn't remember exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> some new new treatments. Uh, yeah, know, some new, new ch- techniques. <laughs> new cutting edge. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But that's, new tools coming out. Yeah, yeah. The fact that there was a dentist convention and then you saw exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, I love it. I love it. It was so random, uh, but such an amazing, the whole 
the whole thing was such an amazing experience. We never ended up hearing back from victory, but we kind of actually disbanded not too long after that. And I, maybe they didn't like us. Maybe they saw that we were old guys that weren't going to tour. <laughs> Who knows? It doesn't even matter. Um, it, no regrets. And it was freaking amazing that we ended up doing it. Oof. We were even actually, I don't know if you remember the show family matters. We were like, we were even uh, playing the family matters thing theme song as we went over the bridge heading into chicago oh uh, amazing such a good time that's great what's your go-to gas station snack go-to gas station snack Mm -hmm. (sighs) man it's been so long since i even had to get gas nowadays i I, I work from home so i'm barely uh ever getting gas but um ah man i don't know i love reese's like oh reese's they make the best reese's i I, I don't eat meat as much uh, anymore because my girlfriend's vegetarian, but I used to get jerky all the time. Like okay. Dan, Danch and I on, on, uh, on the road, we would always be getting meat sticks and, and jerky and slim gins. Oh yeah. 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 Any, any <laughs> meat stick really like slim gins, 100% for sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like uh, yeah. But nowadays, I don't know. I might get like a couple sugar-free uh <laughs> rock stars or monsters <laughs> or something like that or maybe nice. a pr- protein cookie or something i don't know <laughs> right Reese's on. is a is a go-to one for sure yeah it's a staple you can't yeah. go wrong with that <laughs> what was the best gig you've ever played best gig eh mm-hmm. who that's a tough one man um i played so many amazing oh, man a, a handful that come to mind um we played called uh, a juggernaut. It was called juggernaut fest. Um, so we had a, which was with like comeback kid. Um, oh, cool. And it, it was with figure four, which was what mm-hmm. was, I was super psyched about figure. Cause I, I, I loved figure four. Like I loved Andrew's other band figure four, uh, but like they weren't playing shows very right. often. Right. It, they weren't an active band. So uh, getting to s- getting to see them and then play a show on top of that with them. It was, it was just amazing. Um, I think actually a death for every sin was on that as well, which I loved death for every sin. They weren't an active band anymore. So they did, I guess that was like a reunion final word was on that. Um, that comes to mind. There was another, actually there was a, another juggernaut fest uh, that we played. Where, where was, did, where did juggernaut, sorry, where did juggernaut uh, fest happen? Uh, that one was in, in Toronto. Okay. Um, I can't remember the venue, what it was called, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. It was somewhere upstairs, and I think it was across from the reverb. Um, I really can't remember the the name of it. Um, like Risky Business was on that, Kill Decibel. It was a rad show. Um, just, and, and like, um, it was mainly memorable just because of the other bands that we played with. Mm-hmm. Um not so much like for the crowd for us or anything. Right. Not that we didn't have a good crowd, but uh, just like the whole, just being on that bill was just so incredible for it's me. It's a great experience. Yeah. 100%. And then we played it. The, actually the prior juggernaut was with a, an, another amazing uh, lineup. There was a hundred demons on that. Um, oh, cool. Mental was on that. Um, so that one was freaking amazing as well. Um, some of the biggest shows I've played were, we're with Alexis on fire. <laughs> Actually, they, uh, they brought us out to, uh, they brought us out to, um, Sudbury. Um, wait, was it Sudbury? Yeah. Sudbury. They brought us out to Sudbury and there was like 400 kids in this hall. It was just, just insanity. Just to, like, it was just one of the biggest shows we've ever played. Like, I mean, we've had like 200, 300 kids in Welland and stuff. Uh, but just like, playing a show like uh where there's a lot of fans that aren't there actually to necessarily to see you right um Mm -hmm. just new a new crowd um so that was pretty memorable um and another one that comes to mind was uh it was actually a scene fest where we we were actually scheduled to play after alexis on fire it was super late like alexis was going on at I think like midnight and we, this is with the Dana death wish, by the way, sorry, I didn't mention the bands. Uh, 
those other juggernaut fests, by the way, one of them was with Death Wish, one of them was with Rat Affair. Nice. Uh, but uh, the, when we played with Alexis, it was always a Dana Death Wish. Cool. So this one that scene that comes to mind was we were playing at Big Bucks and it was after Alexis on Fire and we were so concerned that everyone was going to leave Big Bucks. Like once Alexis on Fire plays, like we're, we weren't like a super known band, especially not on the level of Alexis on Fire. Um in the area and so we expected everyone to kind of clear out and and with it being in a like a bigger venue like big box we're like concerned about that we'd rather play in like a small area that's packed right um so we remember uh, lexus on fire they finished their their set and literally everyone stayed inside or if maybe some people left at least more people came in and it was just absolutely packed and it was just absolute mayhem there's people jumping into the crowd doing cannonballs people it was just wild i just uh just very memorable show um i i've been i've been so fortunate over the years like to play with some of like my favorite bands like that i looked up to and uh i i have endless amount of of favorite shows and memorable shows like i can talk about for so long like and again i've just been so fortunate to play with many uh many bands that i just look up to and it's uh i don't take it for granted whatsoever that's awesome that's awesome. now correct me if i'm wrong because i might have this wrong did you ever play there was this one festival in welland and it happened when i was in grade eight so i was pretty young when this happened called scum fuck fest <laughs> yeah, Scum fuck. um was that a real thing or was that a fever dream no no i think this is a real <laughs> thing but i don't know if we played that okay. um scum fuck best i was looking at the dana death wish freaking uh archives but it was it was at that uh outdoor venue was it, was it outdoors behind like kind of near merritt island area um it was at the same place that the snips did their final show oh um that like outdoor Richelieu, club Richelieu. yeah 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 fuck scum fuck fest man i it happened <laughs> so scum fuck fest definitely happened i can confirm that whether or not we played that i can't remember like sure do you remember who else played it i can only or really played it i can only really remember rose is dead and oh, maybe rose is dead and chances, it, chances are if rose is dead played we probably played as well that's what i mean and in these walls definitely played too yeah, I I mean, if in these walls played, then technically I kind of played. I was like their fifth member. Cool. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Like, <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> if, if they played, then I played. Yeah, I played Scumfuck Fest or what whatever would, it was what, called. Would you do as their fifth member? Uh, I did a lot of backup vocals. Like if you hear, if you listen to their demos, like I'm on a few of their tracks, actually. Cool. And I actually even, uh, so when we played live, um, I always did a bunch of backups and then I did added backups on songs that weren't even recorded. And then I also went up there and did uh they always covered Sunnet from Prayer for Cleansing. Mm -hmm. So I did uh I shared vocals and did the Sunnet Sunnet cover with uh Berardi. Right on. Right on. And actually uh uh when they they did a tour out in Quebec and their vocalist uh couldn't go out. Um so they asked me to do the tour. Um, with Ro it was actually yeah it was with Rose is Dead as well um, nice. so they asked me to do vocals because I like already knew all the, the lyrics and I knew all the all the tracks uh, so I did vocals for them on a tour out in Quebec with Rose is Dead as well. nice nice now if you were at the like if you were at the level of Metallica what would be your rock star dream writer writer oh yeah oh my god oh man a tough question man yeah I sorry come, sorry i haven't come close to <laughs> even i mean it's not often that we'd even have writers and if we did we'd be asking for like a thing a handful of m&ms the brown ones only or something and <laughs> a bottle of D dasani or something I don't know. uh man at that that's a tough question man um i don't know i don't know i i, I wish i had something to mine 
Bra- brown Skittles and a bottle of Dasani. I like that. <laughs> no, that was just that, that's just kind of a joke. I'll, I'll sh- <laughs> we we sent that. Uh, that was just a kind of a joke that we we ended up sending to a promoter <laughs> once. We're like, uh, yeah, that was in in the joke for I think it was a, a handful of brown brown only M and M's. A handful too. Handful, <laughs> Dasani. And then I, th- I think it was like a stripper named and it was like some specific name or something like that. <laughs> just so out- we're just outrageous joking writers. But man, honestly, I don't even I don't even know. Like we I'm just so used to just we just want some gas money. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Showing up and playing. Yeah. yeah like that's how it was with like even with these shows playing with bigger bands. Like, I mean, anytime you had an opportunity to to play with a bigger band you, you didn't really care even about gas money you know you know i mean you just kind of you're so stoked to to play in front of a crowd where you knew there was going to be a good crowd you knew there was going to be a bunch of people there and and a chance to play in front of a uh, new audience so um as far as writers that's a t- tough question that you threw at me there buddy yes yeah, so, so, <laughs> maybe sorry. i'll get maybe i'll get back to you and message you later <laughs> um, you know what this is what i'd want yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, I, I gear sharing became more popular over the like later years. Now, did you do any gear sharing when you were in like uh, Dana Douglas? Gear sharing? Yeah. Uh, just with other other bands, yeah, like, just, at shows and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, do you have do you have any nightmares from like like gear share nightmares where somebody was promised a you know drum kit and it showed up with a you know broken skins or something? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. And that would be kind of tough for me to even remember being the vocalist. (laughs) Like I had the easiest job, right? I mean, you're a vocalist too. I mean, uh, maybe you help a little bit more, but I, I, I tend, my job was like merch. So I kind of like got there, I set up the merch or, and, uh, as far as gear, I was like, I would help obviously pack and whatnot, but like, uh, I didn't, uh, didn't have too many, uh, experiences with, uh, any nightmares with sharing gear anyway, but, but we would always share gear with like, we share gear with at the mercy and Rose is dead. And just Mm -hmm. like mainly with bands that we knew uh, that we were on the same, a lot of our shows, we were always on a, on with another band that we knew. Um, It wasn't often that we had to kind of share gear with a, with a band that we weren't, uh, weren't already friends with. Mm -hmm. There's expectations or whatnot. Now this one's a big one. Oh, sure. uh, what are some of your favorite all-time artists? Favorite all-time artists. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm all over the place. Like, yeah. Um, like I love, I'm a big fan now of, of Pucifer. So I don't know if you know Pucifer. Oh, Pucifer. Is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's I, uh, uh, it, Maynard's, Maynard. Uh, yeah. 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 So I fucking love Pucifer. Um been huge into bonobo as well oh bonobo uh, they're like the beats and stuff right yeah i actually i i came across them when i went to uh is it mind bomb records yeah, uh, yeah the yeah. record store in st Catharines. Um, shout out to chris shout out yes so and uh they're playing bonobo in there i'm like what is this um i loved it and then uh, i've been hooked ever since um as far as like hardcore bands i'm a huge bane fan comeback kid bane. rest in peace eh yeah, fuck, man. That was crazy. I, I felt like that came out of nowhere, but I, uh, I wasn't necessarily paying attention. Yeah, on, honestly, me neither. Uh, but it's fucking sad. Yeah. Um, huge fan of them. Comeback kid. Uh, uh, I I love like I love like Strike Anywhere, Bad Religion. Um. As far as metal, I'm huge Misery Signals fan. Like, yeah, Misery Signals. They put out a record last year, right? Yeah, yeah. It's late last year. It's it's freaking good. Too short though, but it's, <laughs> it, it's freaking good. Um, have you ever watched their? Uh, I think it's on. I don't know where I've seen it, but they have a, like a documentary. Yeah, actually, I haven't I haven't seen the whole thing yet though. It's um, really good. But I've been yeah, I want to watch it. Um, Whew. I love Alexis on fire as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have pretty wide musical taste. Like uh, I like Unearth, like the go-to darkest hour. Yeah, fucking, yeah. Fucking love those guys. Converge, huge Converge fan. Yeah, 
Can't oh, go no. wrong with convenience. But actually, this brings up another local band that I'm pumped on is Teeth. Teeth. Uh, Blake. Teeth. Yeah, Blake is like, ah, man, in my opinion, he's like the best like metal vocalist in this area. Mm-hmm. He's fucking way too talented. He's a really love, good vocalist. Love that guy. Um, he's just crazy on stage too. Yeah, he's got. Um, he's quite so, uh, quite an animal. Pretty pumped for Teeth as well. Pumped for those guys. Um, but yeah, there's a there's a. I mean, I could go on. I have like I don't have like uh, like I just love so many bands on the same level kind of thing. But uh, Mr. Signals, Bane, uh, Kid Dynamite, love Kid Dynamite. Cool, yeah. Uh, we up uh, refused. I love refused. Right, can't go wrong with refused. If you like, uh, if you like Bonobo, uh, I suggest you checking out a band, uh, or I don't know if they're a band. It's a solo guy. It's, uh, pre- uh, preface, preface seventy three. Preface. I feel like that came on one time when Bonobo finished. Oh yeah, <laughs> like, like li- on listening on uh, Spotify. Yeah, same I'm gonna, caliber. I'm gonna I'm gonna add that right now so I don't. So pre, what is it again? Uh, preface seventy three. What's it called again? Preface seventy three. Okay, I'll just make a note of that so I don't forget. And <laughs> actually, while you're at it, while I'm suggesting bands, definitely yeah. check out if you haven't already. RJD two. RJD two. D two. RJD two. You would probably, if you Sweet. like, the, if you like that stuff, you would probably like it. Awesome. Well, awesome. well, Chico, thank you so much for coming on. It was a pleasure no problem, getting brother. to know you as a, as a little better as someone who's always <laughs> been familiar with your work and then uh, that you've done throughout the Niagara music community over the past 20 years. Where can the listeners fi- uh, find Scott? Sky? I butchered the shit out of this. <laughs> it's all I'm good, gonna, brother. I'm going to do this again. <laughs> Don't edit that. Let's keep that in. Nah, keep that in. All right, all right. Well, rock, man. Where, where can the where can the listeners find Sky Caught Fire on all the socials? And uh, if you have any other uh, things that you want to plug? Now's the time. Yeah, just uh, I mean, simple searches uh, on any platform: Facebook, Twitter. I think we're we even got a TikTok. I don't oh, know nice. what we're doing. Don't know what we're doing on there, but uh, Twitter. <laughs> good, just good search dances. Sky Caught Fire on any of those. Uh, we're all over Spotify, Bandcamp uh apple music uh yeah just do a little sky caught fire search and you'll find us right on right on so we're gonna end the show with forever in shackles by sky caught fire thank you so much for hanging out thanks so much for having me appreciate it buddy Carry with me, it's
so much for tuning into this week's episode of Banecdotes. That was my conversation with Craig Chico Laro of Sky Caught Fire. He also played in such bands as A Day and a Death Wish, Rat Affair, and American Hell. We got the show started off with a tune of Sky Caught Fires called Limitless. And in the middle there, I played a song of theirs called The Ghost in Me. And then we ended the show with Forever in Shackles. Don't forget to like and subscribe, rate and review, follow us on Instagram at Banecdotes, that's B-A-N-D-E-C-D-O-T-E-S. And if you want to be a part of the show in any capacity, shoot me an email, banecdotes at gmail.com. Take it easy, folks.